ready to send it down to ringside and Kenny Rice the hardest working guy in Brooklyn tonight Kenny <laughs> thank you Al as we get ready for Spence against Vargas and right with me is Ray Leonard a lot of anticipation here about this fight from the standpoint that you're going to see the Olympian who is undefeated in Errol the Truth Spence Jr. Let's take a look at the tale of the tape presented by Corona. As you see, Spence is unbeaten, 25 years of age, and the reach, the height, right about the same there for each man. Vargas has won a title in Canada. He has taken this fight on three short weeks' notice. It's scheduled for 10 rounds. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee or doctor can stop the fight. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round, and the fight is official after the start of round six. Let's go to Michael C. Williams with the official introductions. Premier Boxing Champions now presents eight rounds of action in the welterweight division. The three judges ringside will be John Basile, Alexa Roldan, and Robin Taylor. Your referee in charge of the action is Tony Chiardinano. And now first introducing out of the red corner, he wears the black trunks trimmed in red, hailing from Toronto, Canada. He brings a professional record of 20 wins with just one loss, one draw, 10 victories by way of knockout. Introducing Samuel Vargas. And across the ring tonight, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the white and navy trunks, hailing from Dallas, Texas. He brings a professional record undefeated. 15 wins, no defeats, 12 victories by way of knockout. Introducing Errol, the truth, Spence Jr. Let me get one. Let me get one with Errol. Sammy, Billy. Sammy, Errol, we went over the rules in the locker room. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands. Protect yourselves at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. So for Errol Spence, a bit of a homecoming, a little stretch in saying that. He was actually born out on Long Island. He grew up in Texas, has family members in Alabama and Texas. But he said there's still some family members here in the New York area. They're here to see me tonight. And Vargas. Pretty bold step for him. He's taking this on three weeks notice against an undefeated Olympian who is a guy seen to be on the rise. And on top of that, he is a southpaw, as you can see, the man in the white with the blue. It makes it quite difficult, Kenny, with power, southpaw, with confidence. So Samuel Vargas, who was born in Toronto, that's where his home is. He has picked up some titles along the way in his native country. And as far as fighting a southpaw, he said he has before, and he's been sparring a little bit with southpaws rather quickly in these last uh, 10, 12 days or so. Kind of a cram course to get ready for Spence. Well, he's moving the right way against a southpaw. You move to your left. Stay, stay clear of his uh, straight left hand. And right now, early on, Samuel Vargas being aggressive. Spence, you see him use that jab. He has been so effective throughout his career, a young career. He's turned pro at the age of 22 in 2012. But Ray, throughout these 15 wins, 12 of those by way of knockout, he sets it up with good jabs. Well, Spence, he just takes his time. He plants his shot. He's on balance. And he, he watches with his eyes to see what's coming. You see the concentration in Spence. Hey, no punching. Keep it clean, guys. Keep it clean. Sam, not, not in the back of the head. Come on. Keep it clean. Hear the warning there to Sam Vargas. 
Don't grab the back of the head. Under a minute to go here in round one scheduled for 10. Many feel this will not be a 10-round fight, given the fact that Spence has been knocking people out almost in every fight, 12 of his 15 wins. Vargas, 20 wins, 10 of those coming by way of knockout. Again, Spence landing the jabs, nice left. And again, two nice power shots by Spence near the end of round one as it ticks down. Huh. Earl the Truth Spence Jr. closing out the round strong. He's a man with international experience. Perhaps you remember him from the games in London, and Spence talks about his Olympic experience. It hurts when you lose. Uh, the last time I lost was in the Olympics, sorry, sorry. and I cried. Um, Fighting on that stage, the biggest stage drop. in the world, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. It's, it's a bad feeling to lose to somebody, especially when you work hard and you dedicate yourself to something. It hurts a lot. Guys, as many recall, the 2012 Olympics was a rough one for USA Boxing. The men's team went medalist for the first time in history. Kind of a bottoming out for that Olympic boxing's most decorated program. Two members of that team, though, Errol Spence and Marcus Brown, are on this card tonight. Brown described it to me as a terrible experience, but after there was a silver lining in that failure. Motivation. As Brown told me, I never want to experience that feeling again. All right, thank you, Chris Mannix. As we start round two, scheduled for 10, it is Earl the Truth Spence Jr. in the white with the blue and coming in from Canada, taking this fight on short notice in the red and black is Samuel Vargas. What do you see from Spence closing out that first round, Ray? Well, Spence now has, uh, uh, you know, he has the feel for what Vargas brings to the table. Taking his time, jabbing. And the right hand, and the left, and the right hand. <laughs> and there it is. Vargas Five, goes to the canvas. Six, Knocked down for Spence. Seven. Here in round eight. two. Look at me. Come to me. Let's go. Good. Spence again. 15 wins, no losses. 12 by way of knockout. Moves in again with the jab, trying to follow up. We saw the good shot early. Talking to him yesterday, he's a very confident young man. He's a very confident young man, and uh, this fight should be pretty much over because there's nothing Vargas can do. As Spence continues to stalk him and walk him and take over this fight, already a knockdown here early in this round. And there's a confidence with it, but he realizes in 147, it's a pretty tough waist class out there right now. Pretty much so, and look at the punches. But he feels that he's a guy that, you know, will keep moving up in the next year or so. And certainly, you look at the CompuBox stat right now, the punch is thrown. 55 to 6 landed by Spence, including a couple of big ones that sent Vargas to the ground. And a good shot to the body. Vargas. Is a man hanging on right now, Ray Leonard? Well, the thing about Spence, again, he went to the body, he throws a variation of punches. He's a good student of boxing. <laughs> you should learn something new every time you step into the ring. Thing you would tell Spence right now if he said, Sugar Ray, give me your, your advice. How can I become the champ like you were? You know, right now, Come on, guys, there's back nothing clean. that needs to be told. I mean, he, he's fighting the right fight here. One fight at a time. That's what Spence just talked about yesterday. Even with all that confidence, there is uh, 
a swagger, but uh, he still has his feet on the ground, if that makes sense. He knows he's got a punch. We've already seen it. Set up with the jab, and then down goes Vargas. Some real nice work from Spence in the last round, all set up by that southpaw right jab. He fires a straight left hand, comes back around with that right hook, lands on the top of the head, damages his opponent. Good work from Spence there. Another angle of it here. Double jab, left hand, beautiful right hook. Basic boxing, always come back with a hook after the left hand. Good stuff from Spence. Thank you, B.J. Flores. As we start this round three, it's scheduled for 10. Earl Spence Jr. in the white with blue. The former Olympian has been in control of this fight with Sam Vargas, the Canadian who took it on short notice, had three Watch weeks to get ready. Watch Kenny Rice, Sugar Ray Leonard, Leonard, Chris Mannix, B.J. Flores, glad you're with us for Premier Boxing Champions here on NBCSN. Steve Farhood with us, scoring it unofficially. Spence getting the knockdown and getting a 10-8 round the last time. He has all two rounds so far. And has uh, been in charge pretty much, Ray, as uh, most everyone expected this fight to go. Oh, he's dominating big time. He's taking his time. Does that show you something? When he had the knockdown, he didn't rush after that like some young fighters would. Of course, break, break. most don't have the international experience that Spence has. But they would rush in wanting to try to end it with a knockout soon. Well, yeah, that's from a lot of fighters. But Kenny, the thing, the international experience he has, the Olympic experience he has, look at the way he puts his punches together. Very short, precise, accurate, and powerful. Very short. Quite the mature watch fighter. Watch your heads, watch your heads. As we're seeing, Spence started at 15. Really hadn't planned on it, but his dad was a big fan of boxing. He said, you are going to be a fighter. And Vargas, he has never been knocked out. Watch your feet, guys. Watch your his feet. His only loss coming by unanimous decision. But he has been knocked down in this last round, we saw. And Spence oh, trying to finish minutes. it off here. Going nice to the body. And now a good uppercut. Off his head, off his head. Vargas knocked down that last round only the second time of his career. So that is why this guy says, I'll fight a former Olympian who's a southpaw on three weeks' notice. I'm pretty tough. It's hard to knock me down, much less knock me out. He's weighing him down, though. Spence is really doing a good job. Spence hoping to change things here and be the first person to knock Vargas out. Notice that Spence comes down off his toes. That's power. It's all raw power. And you hear that nice, dull thud that's showing that that's getting deep into the rim sometimes, isn't it? Another good round for Earl the Truth Spence Jr. And welcome back to Barclays Center in Brooklyn. The premier boxing champions on NBC. There's Earl Spence taking on Sam Vargas. BJ, what about it? Some real good work from Errol Spence. He's got his man in the corner here and just flurrying. He's hit him with so many body shots, so Vargas isn't really sure where the punches are coming from. You see Spence continually digging that right hook to the body, bringing that left hand back every single time and making Vargas pay every time he puts his back against the ropes. Kenny? Thanks, BJ. As we start round four, scheduled for 10, Vargas has never been knocked out. He's only been knocked down twice in his career, and once happened earlier tonight when Spence sent him to the canvas. Back in round two, and here's the punches through four. 113, 114 now to 13 for Spence. We know one thing, Vargas can take some punches, right? He can, but you also notice that Vargas goes against the ropes a lot now. That means he's getting a little tired, getting a little beaten up with these uh, shots. Let's check in with Chris. Derek Errol in total control out there. You gotta be happy with what you're seeing. Well, I am. He's doing really well. And he's using the jab pretty good, so I am happy. 
shooting the right shots. When you have a guy coming out of the Olympics, getting used to the pro style, what are some of the things you've been working on with him as a pro? Working with him on a jab and using his angles and good body shots and being intelligent. So every time, you don't take every shot you see, but throw the pace down and pick your shots. So that's he's doing pretty well. You always like a young fighter to get out of there early, but is it good for him to get these kind of rounds in a fight like this? Well, I really don't. That doesn't really concern me much. I think we get the rounds in the gym. He's doing 15 rounds sparring, 12 rounds sparring. So we get the rounds. So doing this, it's okay, but you know, we really care about him. Working the right shots and he's doing really well now. Good body shots. This guy's tough. Thanks, Dark. Derek James has taught him well. Very well. Body shots will be the call for him. You were talking about that. Now he goes up top and yeah. the referee moves in and stops it. That is it. The Truth Spitz Jr. finishes off Sam Vargas. He worked the body, then goes up top. That is the end of the night. And for the first time, Vargas just getting worn out there. No one expected that this was going to be a 10-round fight, Ray. Well, with the talent of Spence, I mean, he, he he looks very impressive. Knew exactly what he was doing and what he had to do to win. And as you pointed out, all those body shots, how effective they are. They take their toll. BJ, let's take another look at how Spence finishes off Vargas here with the TKO. Yeah, he's got him against the ropes here. Just more of the same. He's continually dug that right hook, that left hand into the body, to the head. And Vargas got to the point where he was simply overwhelmed, outmatched. And, uh, you know, I think the referee just made a good call. Spence is punishing him, hitting him up top, downstairs. A merciful stoppage there, really. And uh, glad the, uh, the end came before it's too late, guys. Spence had landed, had landed a hundred more blows than had Vargas. And most of them very effective. These are the ones that seal the deal that keep Earl Spence undefeated at 16-0, winning for the 13th time by way of knockout. We'll hear from the former Olympian when we come back to Brooklyn. And welcome back. Here's how they finish it off. Earl the True Spence still undefeated. For the first time, Samuel Vargas has been stopped. TKO victory for Spence. Let's get the official time. Go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the ring, the referee waves it off. Official time, one minute, 45 seconds into round number four. The winner by TKO, still undefeated, Errol, the truth, Spence Jr. Another win by knockout. 13 knockout victories in 16 wins. You say every fighter should try to learn something. What did he learn tonight, Ray, you think? Um, how to pace himself. But he, again, this young man is very, he's very advanced for his uh, level of boxing. And you see. See a lot of promise. It was an uneven playing field tonight. Look at the punches landed. 135 total jabs. Those jabs setting up those big power punches as usual, 33 to two. Well, that kind of tells the story, doesn't it? 102 power punches going to CompuBox to 13. A dominating TKO winning performance by Earl Spence. He's standing by with Chris. Thanks, Kenny. Earl, just a total win for you tonight. Was this what you expected against this opponent? Um, definitely. I knew he was going to be a tough fighter, and he, uh, he came forward, he gave it his all, but um, I was prepared for this. I opposed the fight March 13th, so I've been training for about four months now. When you're in a fight that you're in complete control of, are you trying to work on some stuff during the fight, treating it almost like a sparring session, or are you just trying to get the guy out of there? Well, I'm trying to get the guy out of there. Uh, I don't want to go more rounds than I need to, because we're in eight-ounce gloves. I mean, one shot can change the fight, so I'm not going to play with my opponent. Let's take a look at the knockdown. Oh, we don't have a camera up here, but <laughs> when, when you put him down, did you think he was going to get back up? This is a guy that hasn't been stopped before. Um, I knew he was going to get back up. I seen his fights. I seen him get knocked down before, come back and win and knock the guy out. So I, uh, I knew he wasn't really that hurt. I just, I think I hit him a little bit in equilibrium and he got knocked off a little bit. But he got back up and fought and I was able to finish him later on in the rounds. 16 fights into your pro career. How happy are you with your progress? Uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, I'm ready to step up in competition and fight, um, you know, more name-known opponents. 
Thanks, Earl. Thank you. Kenny? Thanks, Chris. And Earl Spence Jr. The truth is he is 16-0 and 13 wins coming by way of knockout.